In this video, I thought I'd talk a little bit about the topic of free energy. If you Google the words free energy or or YouTube the words, I should say, you'll find a whole variety of videos out there now where people are making so-called free energy devices. And I thought I'd talk a little bit about how I think most of them are done. Here, for example, I've got one in my hand. You can see it's actually turning. Not only is it turning, but it's actually lighting the two LEDs on it. So I'm at actually, actually generating alternating current. And uh, I'm going to let you see this thing up close so you can see there's no, uh, no hidden batteries on it. Here, let me pull this off here. That's just a coil of wire, a couple of LEDs. I've got a little glue stick there for my stand. But uh, yeah, there's no, no hidden wires. And as you can see, give the thing a little push. It just keeps on turning. So what do you guys think? Have I solved the world's energy problem? Well, I think not. Actually, a little trick to this, and I'm sure most of you probably figured out what it is, but I've got a rotating magnet underneath the platform here. In fact, let me move this out of the site here so you can see. There we go. There's a source of our free energy right there. A nice big neodymium magnet spinning around on the top of a motor shaft. I thought this would be a fun topic because I believe that a lot of people out there that are experimenting with these devices mean well, and I think a large percent of them don't even know how to test their own gadgets. And I'm going to talk a little bit about some of that. Now if you study the law of thermodynamics, which is a branch of physics, you'll learn that one of the things they teach is that energy can never be created out of nothing. It can be transferred or transformed but you're not going to get something out of nothing. That's why a physics students going to have a hard time believing that you can produce an electric motor that's going to put out more energy than what goes into it. Nevertheless, I like to challenge the laws of physics and see what's possible on my own. Perhaps they overlook something, you never know. Now I've got a little demonstration model here I thought demonstrated the point somewhat. What you're looking at here are a couple of DC permanent magnet motors I picked up in a secondhand store. Can't tell you who makes them, but they're about the most efficient motors I've ever picked up. In fact, these motors are so efficient, I can take this little AA battery right here and hook it up to the two input wires, and you'll see that I'm able to uh, turn the pulleys on both these. In fact, this thing's so efficient, I actually took a watch battery and I was also able to turn the motors that way. Now, these motors are very efficient as motors, but they're also very efficient as generators. In fact, if I turn the pulley on one, it turns the pulley on the other. doesn't matter which one I turn. And uh, when, I, when I do a complete 360 degrees of rotation, you'll notice that this motor here isn't quite able to keep up. I think I've lost about 90 degrees of rotation there. When I do a complete circle, I'll go ahead and do it one more time. Well, not quite 90 degrees, but you can see I lost quite a bit there. And that seems to be the problem when you build a motor that will, well, hopefully put out more energy than what you put into it. It seems that the laws of physics are correct in this regard. Now, I again, I know if you go on YouTube and you look at all the different videos by people claiming they produce free energy, you might think otherwise. And uh, who knows, perhaps somebody one day will figure out some little trick that somebody else failed to recognize. But as far as I could see, it seems as though when, when you're dealing with electromagnetism, they follow the same laws as anything mechanical. It seems as though you never get more energy out of a system than what you put into it. This is what they call a Newton's cradle, and you can see when I let this ball bearing go, it kind of demonstrates a principle. The thing finally steps, stops swinging because of the, the losses here due to air friction and micro vibrations and whatnot. Another area of interest I've seen a lot of people on YouTube experimenting with are these guys that try to build motors based on nothing more than magnetism. And the whole idea is that if you can position a magnet in just the right way, somehow you're going to be able to keep this thing going in a way that's the equivalent of perpetual motion. Well, i got to admit, I got intrigued with the idea that I could do such a thing. And I've built more than one motor trying to see if I could get more energy out by doing this sort of thing. and as far as I could see is that once again the laws of physics seem to be correct and that the thing would always come to a halt at some point. In fact if I quit moving my hand here you're going to see at some point this thing will reach what some call magnetic equilibrium where the thing no longer turns and ends up pushing back the other way. 
so it seems that for every push or pull there is always an opposite so then again maybe one day somebody will figure out the secret perhaps they already have I don't know but uh, I'm not thoroughly convinced of it at this point point. and the lastly there's another area that a lot of people have done experimenting with and that's trying to recycle the back spike that comes off of a a large coil and this is something I found quite fascinating myself here you're looking at a coil I picked up at a garage sale it's got 62 pounds of number 12 gauge wire on it and when I when I saw the coil I thought you know I, I would love to hook this up to a a small power source just to see how much energy comes out of the back spike now the back spike for those that don't know anytime you energize a large coil like this or any coil for that matter you generate a magnetic field and when you cut the power going to the coil what happens is a magnetic field you created collapses back in on the wire from which it came and in the process of moving back to the wire from which it came it cuts across neighboring wires and it produces a second jolt of energy and what happens is when the second jolt of energy comes back out of the coil it's it's actually a lot more power than what goes in but for a brief moment in time and it's important to consider that the time involved here because let me let me put it in simpler terms if it took me let's say 10 microseconds to energize this coil and then I disconnect the power and let's say 50 percent of that energy comes back in one microsecond it would be fair to say that for one microsecond there's more energy coming back than what goes in but it's not really fair to say that it's more overall energy I hope I said that clear enough to where that makes sense now as you can see I've got a little neon light on this coil here and when I bias this thing by closing the switch it allows the voltage from this 9 volt battery to energize the coil when I disconnect it the back spike comes out of the coil it goes right into the neon light now if I hook this neon light directly to the battery there's no way it would light it so if I do that fast enough you can see I keep that thing on by the way if you touch the wires on this coil here it gives you a pretty good shock when you disconnect the power so that's another area I believe it's been a great confusion I've done a lot of experimenting with trying to recycle the back spike and built various commutators on different motors and once again I never found that I was able to get more energy out than what went in anyway the bottom line is here is uh, don't be taken by these guys that claim they've developed free energy machines unless you've seen it with your own eyes and done some of your own tests and uh, you know when it comes to uh, running tests you know there's several ways these guys can verify their motors for the public if they want to prove that what they have really works one is to uh, well heck remove re completely remove the batteries from the system it seems that almost any device I see on YouTube where they're claiming it's producing free energy it's always got batteries hooked to it <laughs> and I've always wondered well why don't they remove the batteries altogether and just have the thing run on its own energy you know just for example if these motors were putting out more energy uh, tie a pulley between the two and we'll keep the thing going in a perpetual motion manner right and like like I said if you want to prove that you can make a motor that's more efficient than what conventional science says is possible then a good way to demonstrate that is to have the motor lift a given weight over a certain amount of time again one horsepower is the ability to lift 33,000 pounds one foot in one minute or if you want to scale that down uh, well let me say let me finish that off by saying that that would require to produce one horsepower requires 746 watts on the other hand one watt should be able to lift 44 and a quarter pounds one foot over a minute as well so if you want to scale it down and prove that you've got a free energy machine I'm sure you'll get lots of people that'll be intrigued with what you're doing and heck if you can do that who knows maybe you'll be the next billionaire anyway I just thought I'd throw together a little fun video on that I know this is something that interests a lot of people and to this day it, it still intrigues me it's it's just uh, just neat to think of just what if somebody could find a little loophole in the system that we believe is uh, never going to change. Anyway, thanks for watching. If you like the video, please give me a thumbs up.